Welcome back to the Virgo channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Know that energy is fluid. Worlds could be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know on this channel, I like to dive deep within the reading. So I do look at everything, but we take time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadows, and see how they play out as karmic themes. This will allow you to understand why your person is doing what they're doing. Very important when you're dealing with a person that has a lot of spiritual blocks. They create a lot of illusions, want you to believe in their facades. You also understand why you're attracting that person into your life. Even no matter how insignificant the relationship is, there's always a spiritual meaning to why people come into your life. The reason why you want to know this is because once you integrate the spiritual lesson, you don't fall for the same types of behaviors. You see how you contributed to the imbalances within the situation. So you're able to actually shape shift the situation. You're able to change it. You're able to avoid negative karmic consequences. So this is why it's important. Otherwise, when we get out of a relationship that was insignificant, didn't bring anything except for a lot of confusion, well, instead of taking those issues or the, that whatever trauma that that person contributed, because we know that they didn't bring in anything aside from that, well, you don't get the same exact energy. And if you did, they don't, you don't entertain it. You're able to see it before it even comes in and does any damage. This is why. Otherwise, people then are afraid to date because they're like, why should I date? The same thing keeps happening. Well, it actually doesn't need to because again, everything that the universe brings you is here to help you evolve into the highest state of consciousness, which is unconditional love, which is actually the energy that you're born with. It's your natural, it's your truest essence is unconditional love. What happens is we're born into families, societies, we date people, we interact with people that wound us. And then we don't learn how to deal with that energy, but then it just kind of becomes part of our subconscious mind. And so we know that the subconscious mind is really the part of the mind that runs the show. Like what's manifesting is based on what you truly feel about yourself and what you can have so like I said it's a way to finally break those negative karmic cycles I always like to give a little explanation before I jump into the reading just because this is a different style reading and my work is based on it I have over 30 years experience in helping people worldwide heal the effects of trauma I have over 100 blogs I have a few books. I came out with an Oracle system. It's an amazing system. These are the cards, which I will be pulling through the word and the video. You see the colors and the themes and all the words have something to do with healing. Okay. Like everything, including that unlock DNA that was popping out. When we unlock our DNA, well, we can, what we're doing is we're changing our internal dialogue. We're not repeating certain karmic thought patterns, core beliefs that keep us blocked from manifesting because those core beliefs create behaviorisms and those behaviorisms and habits are what actually turns on your DNA on and off. So sickness and disease is only 5% inherited. What happens is, is that we again inherit so within this channel, you'll be able to not just heal the effects of your trauma, but break ancestral karma. You're able to actually really live more in alignment with the way that the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, had intended you to live. So it's a big deal. Now, if you want to enter into winning a free reading with me, you have to like the video, subscribe to the channel, write the word of the video in your comment bar. The word of the video is always on the first card that I pull out and it's the underlining energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing. Lately, I've been pulling two cards, one from my deck, one from another deck. Um, so we might do that, but you never have to write both words, just the one word and the word is prudence, prudence. I'm going to take another one.
jealousy. Well, it's so funny. It's only because like, you know, I'm feeling like you're dealing with a person that you almost don't know how to deal with them anymore. And you don't know how to deal with them because they they change second to check, second, moment to moment. And it's because they have a lot of mental activity going on. There is a spiritual connection between you and this person. However, you trigger the shit out of this person. I feel like they expect you to be someone that you're not. They, they don't have any grounds on why they would, you know, think that you should act a certain way towards them. It's just, I feel like they took the connection for granted. They didn't really put too much time and thought into to it. So now what it is, is like, you're not being mean, but you're not being overly loving either. You're not, your energy has changed. And they see that your energy has changed because I feel like you're dealing with someone that stalks you. So I do feel like they've reached out to you. They do reach out to you periodically, but you're not giving them anything. You know, prudence is polite prudence is gentle it's kind but everything that this person has done does not deserve the gentler kindness so they don't trust it so they know that they're deserving and so they're almost like they're holding back from you because they don't really know how to play this it's like I'm feeling like they don't want to really recap on what has transpired between you and them, but they would like to rekindle the re the I, I, the connection because I wouldn't say that you were in a full fledged relationship, but whatever relationship you had. So I just feel like there's a part of you that's like doesn't really want it. That's the underlining energy, because it's like when you don't know what to do, you do nothing. And this is the energy that I feel like you're giving out. You're like, you know what? I don't care anymore because whatever it is that you showed me, you already showed me. And I don't really think that we can come back from what you showed me. But there still is this spiritual connection. I say that I look down my right and I see knowledge, knowledge, wisdom. You see the sacred geometry in the back. They ignored the stickers, never took them off. I don't know if this was a free card that came with it, but I use it within my deck. And that wisdom and knowledge is claircognizance, is clairsentient, is, which is, I don't really know how I know. I just know that we still have a very strong spiritual connection, but they ruin the connection. They ruin the innocence of the connection. Then that's why I feel like you're dealing with it like very prudently. Like it's like, you're not... You're very gentle because you know that this person's wounded, but I feel like they they deliberately tried to hurt you. There's a sense of, if I can't make you move where, because you miss me, because you desire me, well, I'm going to make you move by being manipulative. So there's all these mixed emotions and mainly... This person thought that you were going to react. I think the only thing way that you're reacting is you're not giving this person anything now. Absolutely nothing. There's just like a silence. It's like it's a deadening silence. But when this person reaches out, you again are polite. You're kind. You're you're just not telling them see this person isn't comfortable unless you're like someone that's going to be really needy they like to form attachment styles relationships but not that they want to actually be in that type of relationship they need for somebody to act like that in order for them to feel good about themselves also attachment style a lot of times people don't just volunteer to just give up their energy it's always done where you're being pushed into being subservient whether it's consciously or unconsciously this person started to do it where it was unconscious and i feel like as time went on you weren't reacting so it's like well let me try this well let me try that like so it's almost like they did too many things and they took too much time. They got caught up in the, I want to win, the dominance part of it and being triggered in the fact that you are holding a boundary. So now they're stuck in anger. 
But really what's behind that anger we know is always fear, right? And that fear is fear of abandonment in this situation, but it's also fear in the fact that you're not who they perceive that you were, that they thought that you were going to react and respond a certain way. And not because that that's who you are, but this person plays this game a lot. They've, they've perfected this and that's not what happened. What happened is the more that time and the more that they play games, the more that you really cut your energy. So the strongest thing that you both had was this ESP connection through the heart and mind because they didn't feed or nurture the connection that much. So they knew who you were. They just, you know, wanted it to be a certain way. They wanted to change the dynamic of this of the connection to one where you would be subservient to them, where you were constantly trying to prove how much you had feelings for them. It's like, and it's not like they didn't like that. I feel like they love the fact that you had feelings for them. This person knows that you're not on the same vibration. They they know. You got tired of the manipulation. That's what I said. It's like, it was all about, like, you're not in a relationship with me. It's more about winning. And it doesn't matter what goes on in life. It doesn't matter what I've gone through. It doesn't matter about the connection. Nothing matters. What matters to you is winning, winning at all costs. So in that, it's like, the more that they showed you, the more detached you became, like became from their energy. And that's what they feel. Yeah, they're tired of being undervalued. You're like, it's like you're trying to make me feel less than. You're trying to make me feel less than so that I'll give you more. You're trying to make me question my value and I feel like they couldn't do that they're able to normally do that with people just being near you is intoxicating this card didn't even belong in here but being that we pulled it I'm going to take it because I feel like that's the whole thing it's that you show this person a different way this person was trying to create a self-fulfilling prophecy why relationships don't really work out why it's okay that they play games why they have to have the upper hand. But the thing is, in not giving them anything and almost like, get, like you just kept giving this person the rope and they just kept hanging themselves. And it's like, you didn't save them. They expected you to come in and be like, oh, no, 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 like, let, let's fix that. Let's not. But you're like, okay, if you, that's the way you want to treat me. But again, it was more about the control because they have strong feelings for you. You change them. You change them internally. And I don't feel like a lot of people do that. And it's just because you are true to yourself when you think about it, because the relationship never went anywhere. It's not like it went anywhere. However, they always had feelings and they love the fact that someone that's on a higher vibration was really like, you know, into them. It, it made them feel like important and it, it gave them energy. So they wanted that, but they know that no one's going to continue to do that. They also know someone of your caliber isn't going to do that. So they thought that the connection that they were going to be able to manipulate you where you thought less than of yourself, where you questioned your own right of what you wanted. And that's not what happened. And normally, like I said, this person's able to do it. It's like, and the in and out, you deliberately tried to make, like abandon me. So abandonment, like I said, is like, um, is abandonment when we're an adult. It's not that our parents are gonna abandon us again. It's about learning that the only way we abandon, feel abandoned is when we abandon ourselves. You didn't abandon yourself because you're like, you're like, no, you're not giving me anything. This person wanted you to abandon what, you, what you're doing, like by holding back from you, hoping 
that you were going to forget about how they treated you, that you were going to come in and try and like fix it. But that would happen if you were someone that was wounded. If you were wounded and you had abandonment issues that you never healed, what winds up happening is, is that you do abandon yourself in hopes to get that love outside of yourself. That's not what happened here. That's why this person, like, you taught them something. See, they thought that you were going to react. They thought that they were going to play you. They thought that, you know, you were going to create, like, um, I don't want to say an emotional ruckus, but that you were definitely going to, like, like, be confrontational about how they were treating you, that you were going to want to talk about the connection. At this point, they didn't care whether it was good attention or bad attention, just as long as I can see that you still have this crazy connection towards me, where, P.S., there was a crazy uh, connection between you and this person because there was it was a soul connection, so it's not like you're crazy and saying, well, it was never there. No, it was there. But what this person did was they tried to manipulate the situation where I want to have it, but I want to have everything on my terms. And I don't really even know what my terms are. I just know that you're a little too strong within your own being that whatever I do isn't affecting you. So I don't really feel like you like me as much as I need for you to like me. Because again, this person, like I believe that they they can, they create attachment styles. They like that in the beginning where someone's very doting to them, that someone's bringing all of the attention, that, they, that ev everything's dropped for them. Like they're treated as if they're someone really special. Um, and that's not who you are. And that's not, and that's not who anyone needs to be. You know, the, when a person does that, it means that they haven't created enough of themselves. So again, abandonment doesn't come from the fact that this person would come in and out of your life. It, abandonment comes from abandoning what you would do. So again, um, that's not what happened. You got tired of the abuse. You were like, it's like you're deliberately, again, it's all about winning. It's not about you giving me. It's about, or or it's, or about an equal give and take reciprocity. It's like, you have to give me in order for me to like feel comfortable to give you. And that doesn't just mean uh, tangible things like, like time, but you're emotional capacity to actually show up for me that this person did, like doesn't do that it became all about getting it on their terms so it's almost like they didn't even take the time to get to know you in their mind they were like this is who you are and this is how I'm going to treat you and the more that you resisted the more that they held back and punished you they lost the whole point of the connection, which is about building a connection. This person actually built a wedge in a connection that was never meant to have blockages. It was supposed to be really easy. A soul relationship is easy. But what this person, uh, by, by experiencing it and feeling it, it triggered them so much that it was more about the focus on themselves at the cost of the relationship. Because you're like, well, it brought you back to a place of like abandonment, <laughs> feeling unworthy, feeling again, like not worth any, like not just not worth anything, but in, in a place of imbalance because being manipulated all the time, well, it, you could feel that there's something off. So that creates major intimacy issues. If you're manipulating me, why are you manipulating? Especially if you know I already have feelings for you. Well, you're manipulating where I'm undervaluing myself. So at all costs, it's only about you, including whatever I'm doing. If I'm creating something for myself, if I did get 
take time to give to other family members, to whatever else is, you're going to put yourself in competition with that, which means that you would never get ahead. This person would never allow you to get ahead or manifest anything. They would actually keep you really spiritually stagnant because they're like, well, I want you to be connected to me, but I don't really know whether or not what I, what I want within the relationship. I just don't like you having all this control over me and understand if you would have given this person what they wanted, they certainly wouldn't have stuck around. They're actually still sticking around because you didn't give them. So it puts them into a position of feeling like they don't have control, which that gives them anxiety. It makes them not feel good. It makes them focus on how they treated you. And that's the last thing that they want to do. So I feel like they know that like your destiny is pretty much calling, that you're taking the steps to actually make that happen right now. This is so, it's like, which means that they feel you're leaving them behind. Because it's like, what they're seeing is, no matter what they do, you're not going to be thrown off your path. That if anything, if they get ruin it or or try to even do anything, that's going to completely ruin the connection. So this is a problem. This person is used to being able to create drama and having the connection, everybody get caught up in the unnecessary drama. It never manifests into anything positive. It's just drama. And so it's like they need that. I know I need to release attachments with karmic people. I'm creating a plan to leave him or her. So for some of you, this person like doesn't just have like one person. I feel like they have several. I don't believe that they ever shut the door on any relationship because, hey, they don't want to compromise. They don't want to be vulnerable. They set this situation up. They like attachment styles. It's that I know I have security everywhere. But in that, what they're realizing is that they don't have security anywhere. It's almost like a person that has money issues, that hoards money. And then what happens is they keep winding up losing their money, even though that they stashed it everywhere. See, money is a currency. It's like just like all our tools that we have is currency and your time is currency. Your um, everything is, is your cur currency when you think about it. It's like, but this person wanted you to give them your currencies and they didn't want to give you what they were valued. So always elevating themselves. Now, that's way too many that just fell. So we won't take that deck of cards. Um, so we can see like how toxic this connection is. And the problem is, is that they're used to being in connections that people don't know the difference. However, these connections turn very, uh, very toxic because, you know, you're in a relationship with somebody that, never gives you emotionally, never shows up for you, that is always under, is under val valid, like un undervaluing you, whether that's within your career, like if something happens to you, they're ignoring it. If somebody is liking what you do, like work-wise, they're going to put themselves in competition. It's any area of life, they're going to stagnate you. That's what this is like. You're not allowed to have your own identity. Your identity it triggers this person, though they have feelings. And you would say that's like a complete oxymoron. And it is. It's a psychological reversal where the person, again, wants, wants someone on your level, feels connected, feels love, but is terrified of, of it to a point where they're, it's all about control. It's not even about 
Um, it's about ownership. It's about that. That's what what it is. It's a very low vibration. And again, they they don't want to really see everything is fear based. Like I said, this person, uh, they have avoidance style. And so any type of problems, like if you they, this person makes you feel bad, well, again, they're closed minded to it. They they're not. I'm not going to look at it. So the relationship can't grow because you're allowed to have an opinion. You're allowed to set boundaries. You're allowed to have your own identity. This person, in order to be with them, you're not allowed to, to have that. And that a lot of times doesn't happen unless we were brought up by parents that were really controlling. Or if we dated someone or we had somebody that had power, some sort of power, but they were so controlling and not fair. Like that's why this tends to play out. So it's again, it's all about um, being valued. Again, it says it here that you weren't valued, that, but you were gonna use your, you know, you use your mental force and had a lot of spiritual insight because I feel like, again, you went through this situation before you would have to. It's a trauma. It's a, it's a, it became a, it became a trauma that you were not aware of anymore. It, be, it was, was no longer suppressed. It was repressed. So it became part of who you thought that you were. And you would say, what, that I didn't really were allowed to have your own identity, that you weren't allowed to express your feelings where you were able to be transparent, vulnerable, like you didn't feel safe, that you were always in relationships that were kind of one-sided, that you felt emotionally you always cared so much and that the people that connected to you really we're not emotionally connected unless you became someone else. That's really what this trauma is, at, at why it's playing out within this relationship. Because the avoidant behavior, the closed-minded, the, you know, the manipulation, the gaslighting, the win at all costs, it's all about dominance. It's all about which is not love. It's the opposite of love. It, see, so we can see how it got distorted and that's what happens over time when you don't heal. It just leads to broken hearts, okay? Interference because you got outside people that you don't let go of because you have to have a stash everywhere in order to be safe. No, what that is is that you need to have someone in a lot of different places to feed your ego. That's what this person needs. They don't really need to have that. It's that it's if you argue with them and you or you have an opinion that's not in alignment or you don't play along with their fantasy, well, then you get punished and they have somewhere else to run. So it's their avoidant behavior of not really wanting to talk about anything because everything that you're going to talk about, they're going to see it as an attack. They're going to see it as a, as like you're trying to manipulate them. And that's because they have so much baggage that all they're going to do is project. Everything that you do, they're going to say that, that, um, that you're doing it. Like meaning that there's no reason for to do it, but everything that you're doing is in counteraction to what this person is doing. And so instead of them wanting to look at the situation any differently, they, they again, ignore it. They don't want to do it. And so it's your power and your strength, but it's your spiritual insight that really is affecting this person because understand you're not using words. You're not manipulating. You're not doing anything except for standing in your truth. And it's driving this person crazy because this person is like an energy vampire and, and, and affects people spiritually to the fact that it affects 
them emotionally. So usually they get a little show, they get a little entertainment, which justifies why relationships don't work out and people are crazy and this and that. But it's like, you didn't do that. But this, 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 I, even though it's not a mirror, it kind of looks like a mirror to me, even though it's a sapphire, um, which happens to be a, the birthstone stone of Virgo, which is insight, right? It's very um, powerful, but it's pow powerful through being kind. So which we go back to this prudence energy, which is it's it's a kindness. It's not it's a conservative type of kindness, but it's a kindness where this person is like now stuck, like looking at themselves in the mirror, even though this isn't a mirror. Like I said, it reminds me of a mirror and seeing that they really should have valued you that. But now it's again that they didn't. It's like they're they're reaping the the negative consequences over it. There's there's a lot of turmoil, which is unexpected. This person wasn't expecting it. How can if I haven't given it energy or time? This person knows. They thought, uh, you just you'll get over it, or it'll just fizzle out, and that's not what happened. And what they're 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 stuck in is actually your wise judgment. It's like your wise judgment that you listen to the divine, you listen to spirit, and because you listen to spirit, you're like, no, I'm I'm not gonna like do what you want me to do, but I'm not gonna yell and scream and try and manipulate you. See, they're used to the whole manipulation. See, to create an attachment style, it doesn't. It doesn't start off that it's balanced. It always starts off that there's an imbalance. It's just that this person is normally would be in control or you wind up with somebody that, you know, has played the game so many times that they pretty much think that they know how things are going to play out, not because they took the time to get to know you. So this person was kind of like living up in their head and I feel like taking out on you for, again, their previous relationships and their previous relationships are toxic. When, when they're created on, on codependency, when they're created on dominance, when they're con uh, control, nothing positive always leads to a broken heart. It will just always lead to that. Because this person just is not happy they're bitter and and so again they have a lot of emotional pain and that emotional pain is what they connect to with these outside people because again those people are not getting what they need so they create problems within the relationship it creates a lot of drama this person needs it it's again why they they're so bitter it's like their emotional pain. It's like they don't want to feel that emotional pain and being around you and having you not respond, not, they can't say that you're someone that you're not, believe me, they tried to. They can't, there's, they have no ammunition to feed, right? When we're angry with someone and we're, if we're a negative person, we actually look for problems, we look for things to throw in that person's face or to justify the negative behavior, which is, again, this person's default mechanism. It's like, at first, I don't care. And then if by chance I do care, and normally I'm able to like get you to react by poking you doing something to get you to react, that didn't work. Then I looked for something maybe in records, in, in the town records or like uh, online or any little information that's negative that I can hold on to and use that as ammunition. They can't find anything. And you acting like, again, so dutiful, I don't want to say dutiful, like as in wrong word, um, you acting so prudently, 
you know, um, if you're very kind, you're nurturing. It's like you're, this is the mirror. Because what they're saying is I had no reason to do what I did to this person, this fell. And so now they're in a place of being stressful because they're looking at their behavior and that, again, does not make them feel good. It makes them feel horrible. Like, did any of, the, of these cards fall, fall out? I'm like, from this deck and from the other deck, yes. Well, there's two that I found, so we're going to take them because I never believe in that there's mistakes. And we'll finish up with the, this deck. One is addiction and one's balance. So, again, that avoidant behavior, you might say, well... If they really cared, how come I don't feel them? Addictions, they're avoiding. It's like, I don't know how to fix this. They're in a place of fear. It doesn't feel well. It's like they know they, they took it too far. They know. They got caught up in it. They got so caught up in wanting to control and wanting and thinking that it was a game. And, and now they're looking at you and seeing, well, that you're not like that at all. I can't even say anything that you like that you're toxic. What toxic? Because you're not being rude. You don't even want to talk about what happened. You have reason to be angry at me, and you're not being angry with me. So it's again, this person is stuck looking at their behavior and is creating a lot of imbalances. But when they're near you, they feel balanced because you are balanced. So there's a sense of you make me feel comfortable, but I'm so uncomfortable because of everything that I've done. And they don't know how to fix it because in order to fix it, they'd have to actually integrate some of those higher characteristics, such as like being humble, asking for an apology, like being transparent sharing a little bit about their background they have they haven't talked about that so to for them to be able to talk to you about it i think that it that would take them a really long time because there's someone that's avoided it it's played out within every single relationship that's why this person was cocky and was like i know how you're gonna act they didn't know how you were gonna act it's like, but people tend to either flip out or try and fix it or ignore what they've done. So they, they just expected it. And here it is. You have someone, you're someone that has a high vibration, just someone that they'd be proud to be with and they know it. But there's a part of this person that doesn't believe that they're deserving of it. So I don't know why I'm getting asked to pull from this card to see this deck, rather. Let's see. No matter how hard you try to convince yourself, otherwise you are never alone. So this person, again, doesn't really believe that they fit in anywhere. This is all about the lesson that you learned, like I said, which was all about choosing yourself. That there's a divinity inside of each and every single one of us. And that divinity inside of ourselves is the spirit, spirit part of self. It transcends the limitations of the mind. So abandonment happens when, again, we were around. And it doesn't necessarily all the time mean childhood. But obviously, if the situation happened in our childhood, we would see it play out numerous times within our life whether it's within our regular friendships, our most intimate and sexual relationships, any relationship, the theme would be abandonment. No one's here. No one's here. No one loves me. When we cut and break it down and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, I'm alone, I'm insignificant, I don't matter, all these energy which is how this person tried to make you feel but as I said they couldn't have made you feel that way unless that energy was inside of you so this 
in my opinion, it was all about going back to those childhood wounds where parent wasn't there. There was no support. You were alone. But what spirit is saying is you don't need anything outside of yourself. So yes, you were put in situation where this person, yes, from a logical analytical standpoint, they should have been there for you. They should have been. But they're not they're not capable of being there for themselves. So again, we see that how they handled it. So for you, it was more about going back to your childhood and saying, I don't, yes, it's nice to have people there. But sometimes we go through life and the people that are actually in our life are people that we would least expect for them to be in our life during a difficult time. While other times like, you might say, well, I never have anyone be there for me. And that spirit's trying to say, you don't need anyone. The issue is the perception that you need someone outside of you. So yes, we all could want that. And this is why abandonment, again, that you can't really be abandoned unless you abandon yourself because the divinity part of self is that God part of self, the supernatural part of yourself, which is never, ever, ever gone from you. So you always have the possibility to shape shift your situation because there's many different realities that play it at one time. Your level of consciousness depend on your core beliefs. So being brought up again in an environment that you didn't get the love, you didn't get the support, you didn't get the nurturing, obviously you'd say, well, I need to get that and I never get that. So there's actually too much attention already on what you perceive that you need because you never had it. Two, you don't know what it looks like. You don't know what it feels like. You didn't experience it. So the anxiety and the stress is what takes place. So what comes from that is not being able to attract what you want. What comes from that is self-doubt. So normally out of anxiety, people tend to abandon themselves to give more. That's what this person knew. And that is is what you knew from childhood, I feel like. So you were like, no, I already know this game. And this is bring the light from within you to the surface to shine. That instead of putting your energy towards this person, it was about putting your energy into yourself and, and finding what your gifts are. See, this person would have kept you stuck in, in them. It was all about them, what they needed emotionally, what they might have needed financially, what they needed. It was all about them and they set the connection up so that it would actually be that. And that normally works for lower hanging fruit, for people that don't know or never learn the spiritual lesson. Again, this, this wasn't about that where spirit's saying, well, you can't be nothing. You're an energy being. So when, again, someone abandons you, what comes from that normally is I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. And so I'm not worthy. That's why it's no one's stuck around. And that's the card there that how this person made you feel. Now, we also see part of that is their own addictions. Them not showing up for themselves is it also shows you that they can't show up. For, for you. So it, this connection was all about looking inside of you and finding, you know, what gifts came from the situation that you grew up in, because there's light there. There's love there. There's parts of yourself that have shadow over them and parts of ourselves that we have shadow over are either parts of ourselves that we have rejected or parts of ourselves that we just don't know. And because we don't know, we feel uneasy with them. So what Spirit was saying is like, there's actually stuff that's inside of you that you can manifest, but due to being connected to a person that was trying to make you feel unworthy, it was keeping you stuck in this energy that, yes, you're out of this situation because you don't live with your parents anymore, but that core belief was still 
there on some level because it wasn't fully integrated. It doesn't mean that you didn't learn it. It meant you learned it in your head, but you need to go through the experience and actually embody the new consciousness. Otherwise, there's a sense of, I don't know what that feels like. So how do you manifest? Again, through the thoughts that you think, the emotions that you have. So Spirit's saying you needed to integrate those block parts to create the balance within your life. That's why this person came into your life. And this is when you understand there is no such thing as death. You can drop all fears. So again, there's just different levels of consciousness is what spirit is saying. Dropping cards everywhere. <laughs> that spirit's way, that way of saying enough. Ah, allergy medicine is killing me. And of course, I have no water. Okay. Yes, I do. Grieving process is not easy. And I've been in a grieving process where I have been like eating nonstop. And that's been giving me so much ag agita. So there's always when we have spiritual imbalances, there's psychological and emotional imbalances. Our energy needs to flow. And it's normal for people to get out of balance during certain times. It's you know, you lose a job, you lose a parent, you lose whatever. It's it's a sad time. It brings up emotions. It makes you reflect. It makes you take the deep dive whether you want to or not. So you wind up a little bit in a dark night of the soul. This person that in this story puts themselves in that state all the time. Okay. It's like I said, it's not bad that we get in balance it's a normal part of life the issue is that there's been no spiritual hygiene this person that's why they took it to the extreme it was about winning they lost that whole why the relationship but we have to say it's not really about them when it's our story and it's affected us Yes, we can say, well, that person made us feel, but spirit says, but the bigger reason, the spiritual reason was to help you return to a place that was uncomfortable, that you wouldn't have volunteered to go. And it was a place where, you know, that trauma, if a parent doesn't show up because of their addiction. It's not uncommon if we're with, we're in the, um, with an alcoholic, I attracted an alcoholic. Well, that energy, it's all about the codependency. So you actually avoided this person because you broke the family karma where it's like, well, I grew up in, in an environment where I was made to feel unworthy. And so was my mother or my father because they had to take care of somebody that was very codependent. They were avoidant style, that which meant that they couldn't handle their own life. It's like they expected somebody else to do it. But in that, the person that they were connected to was bitter. They were angry. They were resentful because they weren't allowed to create their own life. So here it is. You probably uh, had a really bad relationship with your parents if that was the case or you didn't trust your parent or you feel like your life was affected negatively because of that experience so spirit needed to recreate that environment so that you could see things through a different perception and the different perception would be that now you're the mother or you're the father that's dealing with that avoidant style individual that it's more about them winning. It's more about all, winning at all costs. And they bail out by drinking and by having just other avoidant styles and how it made that person feel undervalued 24-7. And that's why they were angry. That's why they were resentful. Did they even know? Well, a lot of it was just stress. And that's the whole dynamic of these type of connections. It's all about control. It's all about manipulation. But it's done so passively aggressive that you would need to have spiritual insight. 
I feel like you had spiritual insight. This person never expected you to have spiritual insight because no one ever does. So that's what spirit is pretty much saying, saying like, like that's the big reason. But I always like to pull in our child uh, cards too, just to see if we can go even deeper. We see first card out is intolerance, meaning like, I feel like you grew up in that environment and it, you became intolerant there. But people that grow up in an environment that's so toxic, well, the first thing that comes to my mind are allergies, intolerances, and that like, and now we're, we know that this isn't that. However, the sensitivity from living in survival mode conditions the nervous system. So you became overly sensitive, whether you have allergies or whether just like, I just can't live, it makes me sick. It creates stress within my life. So because of that, it was like a clear you know, a uh, sign almost like I've been here before and I don't like it. So, and it's like of not having support as you see like father and a child, right? They look alike, even same haircut. So it's like, it's like my support where the behaviorisms and habits that the parent had like father, like son, like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You know, like we've heard all those different, um, you know, analogies that explain how like a child resembles so much a parent. But in this situation, the parent had addictions. The parent had, you know, issues. So I feel like it was something that, yes, it affected you when you were a child, but it made you actually become very intuitive, very understanding of the spiritual issues because it's like, it doesn't mean that you don't love the parent. It's like, I love the parent. Did I love the way that I was raised? Did I love the pain that they, uh, my parent experienced and it, how it poured onto me? No. But the love that you had for a parent was unconditional, which allows you to be prudent, by the way. I can be prudent because I can see things from a different perception. I don't really need to rehash, call you out on it. I'm actually not going to say anything. So, of course, the spiritual mirror comes up for this person that's, again, now in a very uncomfortable situation being brought up where you were belittled, which again, there's that's right in alignment with undervalued. It's like having an opinion and again, having it not be in alignment. Parents that are alcoholics or drug addicts or just in a very codependent relationship where they should be an Al-Anon because they might not be the alcoholic, but their personality is alcoholic and they're attached to a person that is an alcoholic keeps them stuck in a place of feeling undervalued, belittled. So even if you didn't go through that, but you witnessed a parent go through it, you can inherit that because you're, you were around that parent that had those emotions. You felt the emotions. And it's, it's so close, the bond. So inheriting that, and then to the point that it's like, well, in order for your own survival, and spiritual health, you got to put yourself into isolation, which is, well, if I'm going to have to do that, then I might as well be alone. I'd rather be alone. So I feel like it brought you again back to the situation of the parent that wasn't there, that what they might have physically been there, but they weren't there enough for support. If anything, they needed the support from you, where the child now becomes the parent. And it keeps them in a place of feeling like they're not worthy. It keeps them in a place of putting themselves into, like, again, isolation when they need something. They need to heal themselves. And you just were intolerant. You were like, I'm not, I don't want to be in a connection that's one-sided. Or a so-called friendship. Friendship. This is never the friendship card because it's like this kid is like, it's not really friend it's friend and me it's in a dynamic 
that teaches you that love is painful, that love you can't trust, that, and, and that's what this person created. And that's the way you grew up. You were like, grew up with parents that didn't because of their own issues, but you have to, you know, continue to show up because that's your family to the point that you abandon yourself. Where Spirit says that might, that might have been the family, but we don't need to repeat that behavior. And that's what this person would have done inevitably. Resilience. Giving you strength to keep moving forward. Two, three, four. Resilience. I mean, it's not easy to be around people that gaslight like you, people that make you feel bad, people that question. So again, that having to go through that experience made you strong. Lies and secrecy. Again, when there's an alcoholic or any imbalance, as children, we're not advertising that. It's not something that we're proud of. However, the lies and the secrets that we hide behind because of how we now perceive that there's something wrong with us, that we're not worthy, and so is that we tend to overgive, overdo. And we have to go through this spiritual test a few times. And that also creates resiliency. So I feel like, again, the situation was all about that, bringing up those that memory. I'm going to pull one more. And that's organized chaos. And the one behind it was self-love, okay? And then overwhelmed, which is all about the same thing. So, which is being brought up in an environment that didn't make you feel safe, where you were manipulated, where if you didn't mold to the environment, and that could be if the parent was in a bad mood, being able to read the environment and become subservient to that, becoming the parent, for that parent and again it's not a blame game but we have to understand where did the wound come from what is the psychological block and the psychological block what was that it's that you know feeling that you had to abandon who you are in order to get love and you did that as a child and nothing good ever manifested it kept you in a place of limitation. It kept you in a place of feeling again belittled, like not, not worthy of anything. So you learn that spiritual lesson that it was really all about giving yourself the self-love by giving yourself what you needed to do, which is your anchor, really. So again, yes, a parent is, is perceived to be an anchor because children don't have angers, they don't have direction, but your parents didn't have the direction because they were caught up in their own issues. So the universe became your anchor. And then as you were older, your life, your life, which include your gifts, okay? Like the things that help you manifest things that are important to you you utilize your gifts to let let them lead you into creating a new life and in that you you have resiliency because there's always going to be people that try and stop you this person again due to their own wounds they're like, well, this happens to work for me. This works for me all the time. But they've come to a place in, in their evolution, it's time to grow up. That it's like, they keep on going into situations where they look for someone to be the rescue. And in that, it, it, it always leads to heartbreak because it's not a balanced relationship. You're not building a connection through nurturing it. It's the emotional bond that makes the connection strong. So where this person never achieves that because they don't put in enough time. So the thing is, you weren't going to abandon what you're doing for anybody, but especially for a person that didn't even give the connection the time. And Spirit says, so the, it's not so much that 
oh, well, it's a waste, the connection. No, the connection taught you. We, a lot of times we have to go back to those experiences to fully understand so we can let go so that we, so that we can utilize that space, right? Because as energy beings, that's what we are. We're space. So your thoughts that you think, the emotions that you have, the actions that you take, well, this is who you become, that you are actually holding yourself back a little bit. And possibly just because there was still that thought, you weren't, you weren't acting on it but you weren't moving forward either. So it was where spirit was saying, well, I'm going to recreate that so that, you know, you can see yourself differently. And also so that this person will see themselves differently. And because the self image that they have in their head is very outdated that at this stage of the game, no one wants to be with an older person that is playing these games. No one wants to be in a situation with anyone that plays these games. But if someone in their 20s and 30s, it's like, well, you know, they're still young. Someone in their 50s and 60s and 70s that are playing this game, it's like, you're too old. You're going to have nothing. And that's what they're seeing. So spirit ends us off with balance. I find a balance between each sphere of my life. I am the master of my daily life. I make time to nourish the spiritual and physical. I bring love to my world by fulfilling the needs of my body and soul. And so that's what this was about. Like I said, we saw this a few times. Again, the whole balance of needing to create balance that this little spiritual imbalance that you weren't really even aware of because you're like, I've been moved out of that house for so long or I haven't been around my parents for so long, or I forgave. We really, until we are able to integrate the spiritual lesson, and that's not just by saying, oh, this is how I contributed in the past because I had no family. I overgave to other people outside of me in hopes to get that love. But it's also to master your own life, realize that there's a lot of hours in the day, time for your spiritual health, time for your gym, time for your work, time for friends. And when you're balanced, you're able to see things from a, a lot of different perceptions, not to mention emotionally you're being fulfilled. So you can't be manipulated. So I also feel like when you're, brought up in organized chaos where you needed to give yourself love because there was no anchor, there was no support. Well, part of that is, like I said, is to making sure that you are emotionally balanced, that you recreate your life. Because when you are, you, you're not just balancing out your your physical with your psychological and your emotional like you're being everything's getting fed but you're able to go with the flow of life you're also giving the universe tools to work through it's again a lot of times people say i i know i'm going to be an actress or i know that i should do this but i don't know how well, you will never know how unless you're actually in your body and you're being led by your gut, intuition, inner knowing, and what allows us to be grounded, to take our focus on what might happen, what did happen, what could happen, and to just be in the moment is by creating, by doing, by redoing. And so, like I said, if we're holding on to negative energy, spirit says you can't just get rid of negative energy. It doesn't work that way. You have to integrate it and then transmute that leftover ne negative energy. That's like, it's like almost like a, um, a residue. It's not even a full thing it's like when you have a block for long periods of time how it becomes an imprint it's like an imprint takes a little while to get rid of it's the remembrance of an experience that actually hasn't been fully integrated and that's what spirit's saying but by 
fully integrating it, you find your gifts, you find your balance, you find your support, you see your worth. So it actually transcended you to the next level. So if somebody that with this energy comes into your life again, you're not going to have the time. And for this person now, they're stuck. They're, they're stuck having to look at their self-image and, and, and look at what they ruined. And because you showed them something that no one else ever showed them and there was feelings. They just took a gamble and, you know, you're like, I don't have time for that. It's like, I don't have time for someone that's not serious. I value myself. And that was actually the spiritual test. All right. I know that that was a long one, Virgo, but you let me know how you resonated with this one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.